Hello everybody, welcome back to the SaaS course and we're gonna get started with coding our very first SaaS website right now. Okay, the first thing you will want to do is create a folder on your desktop or wherever really, but I'm doing it on my desktop. Call it my first SaaS or anything you want really, it doesn't matter. Then open it up as a project in your code editor. When you're in your code editor, you're gonna to want to create an index file, index.html file, and I've already marked a basic HTML page up right here. So if you want to, you know, pause the video and copy this out, you can certainly do that. But for your convenience and ease, this index file, this index.html file is available for download in the final course files anyway. So you could just pull that HTML file over into your my first SAS project and then we can get started because this isn't an HTML course, this is a SAS course. So I'm not gonna be teaching you HTML uh, because that uh, will be going way off track. So anyway, we have our HTML file here. Basically, we just have a header uh, with an H1 tag, an article with some markup in there and a footer tag, footer tag, very, very simple markup. And it looks a little bit like this. It looks exactly like this. Just some basic markup, very simple document right here. And I've linked uh, a file, a CSS file called app.css. I like naming my final CSS file app.css as an application. I like treating my websites as applications. It's just a little bit more professional of a naming convention rather than just styles or, or you know, homepage.css. App.css is a common naming convention among the developer world lately, and I like using it. It just looks kind of cool, and it's very simple, very easy to write too. Anyway link that into your head of your HTML, and then you're going to wanna to create a new SAS file. So in your code editor here, create a new file and call it app.sass. And in your app.sass file, this is where we're gonna have, this is where we're gonna do a lot of fun stuff. And now before we get started coding any SAS, I want to boot up our compiler. And we're gonna start with terminal. We're gonna use terminal or the command line because it's nice and simple. And if you want to use CodeKit or um, Koala or whatever other like Hammer or different apps you want to try, you can certainly do that. But right now I'm just going to use the command line because it's simple and everyone has access to it. Okay, so let's go ahead, open up our command line here. And I'm going to CD into my desktop and I'm going to find the My First SAS project folder. And now I am in there and you can tell that you're in there if you type the command ls, that will list out the files that are in that folder. So you can see right here in the command line, app.sass and index.html, it, it's very clearly the right folder. So we're in my first sass in the command line. We're gonna start up with the sass double dash watch command and then the input, the, the syntax of this command is sass watch input output. So you can input uh, a folder, you can just type a folder name. If you had a folder called styles, you could say styles, so watch styles. And output, you know, you can output a different folder uh, and it will take any of those SAS files in the input and export them into CSS files into whatever you want to output them into. Hopefully that makes sense. But we're just gonna target the app.sass file. Use a colon to separate the input from the output. And the output will be app.css and then hit return and it's gonna start watching for changes. It's already created a CSS file based off of that and a CSS map for debug debugging purposes. And there's nothing in the CSS file yet because we haven't written any SAS. So here in our SAS file, let's get started. I, I like starting my CSS files off with a title uh, using a comment and the comments in SAS are just double forward slashes. You can use normal CSS comments like this or you can use comments like this. The difference is this is going to show up in your final CSS and this isn't. That's kind of for internal use in your source SAS file and this is for public viewing if somebody wants to view your style sheet. So you can see right here that the this comment showed up but this comment didn't. So just something to note, don't write anything private uh, in your public comments and don't write any passwords or anything in any of the comments but you get the idea here. So I'm just gonna say, with uh, one of these comments here, the SAS course. You don't have to write this, I'm just doing it for my own reasons. 
and I'm just going to separate them with some another comment there. So that's my title, and I'm going to structure out my SAS file right now really uh, before we get started. So I'm gonna say variables, I'm gonna say mix-ins, I'm gonna say styles. So we're gonna have three different sections to this SAS file, the variables, the mix-ins, and the styles. So what's great about SAS is that you can use variables, and we'll talk really in depth about this in an upcoming module here, but we're just gonna start using them, and you can, you'll can you get the idea right away. So I'm gonna create a variable, and I'm gonna call it black. To create a variable in SAS, you need to start off with the dollar sign, and then the title of your, the name of your variable, and then a colon. Now you're gonna assign a value to that, and I'm gonna say triple three, no semicolons or anything after that. Uh, it's very, very simple syntax. I'm gonna set another variable as pale, and I'm gonna give it the color D2E1DD, no semicolon, kinda of get rid of that habit. And pink, that color will be C69, and we're gonna have another color here called blue, and we're gonna call it 036. So those are some variables for colors, and I'm gonna have a couple spaces there and put some more, uh, variables here, I'm gonna say font stack. So you can put other things in your variables here. I'm gonna say andale mono, and then just monospace. You can put whatever font stack you want in here. So go ahead and put your font stack. Could be Helvetica, Arial, could be Georgia, could be a sans serif, serif, mono, space font, whatever you want. Font size, uh, we're gonna use this as a font size base. And I'm gonna say 14 pixels. So now when I save this, Nothing's gonna show up here in my CSS file because these aren't visible on CSS. This isn't CSS, this is SAS right here. Variables are little containers that are holding data, little buckets that hold data that we can pull from and use across our application using SAS. And this is, what's, this is what makes SAS super powerful. So those are our variables. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save a mix in for a little bit later. And we're gonna start right here with our styles. And the first thing I wanna style is my body. Now I don't need to put semicolons in SAS. Don't add semicolons. You don't need uh, curly braces or semicolons. So this is the basic syntax. If I wanted to add a background, I would say, let's pull that pale color. So I'll just use the variable pale, save it. So look, I don't have uh, curly braces or semicolon. And that is gonna export as this. It's got the semicolons, it's got the curly, sorry, the curly braces and the semicolons, and it's valid CSS. Now, if I were to view that in my browser, it has that pale background color. So let's move on. Let's keep going forward here. Let's say the color of the, I want the color of the body to be black. So the text color and the blacks that we set up here was triple three, not actual triple zero. And that will have changed the, the text color. It's very subtle. You can see it though. Let's set the font family to, you guessed it, font stack. That's gonna change that font stack. Here you can see it's a mono space font. It's Andale or Andale. Andale, mono. I don't really know how to pronounce that. Font family, uh, and now we're gonna do font size, and these are all variables, this is cool. Font size is gonna be that font size variable that we set up there, 14 pixels. It's gonna slightly modify the size of that web page. Now let's look at our CSS. Look how cool that is. It's compiled all of that SAS into CSS. I mean, you might wonder what the whole point of SAS is to save typing and stuff, right? You've typed clearly way more code in SAS than in CSS. Right here, I see 25 lines. And right here, I see, what, five lines of code? Brad, you're lying to me. CSS is shorter than SAS. No, 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 not necessarily so. Once you start coding SAS at the very beginning of your project, you're probably gonna write a little bit more than usual because you're gonna set out your variables, you're gonna set out some mix-ins, maybe you have a couple other functions, you have some uh, operators going on and you're, you're setting up what you're gonna be using throughout your application. And then as you start building, this is where you start saving time. First of all, you don't have to write those pesky uh, curly braces and, and semicolons. That's one, two, three, four, five, six uh, extra characters in these few lines of code that I don't have to type anymore. Also, it's once you start nesting, and you don't have to write extra long selectors, or when you're using mix-ins and you have multiple lines of code and all you have to do is call a single mix-in in your style, in that uh, de declaration you're making, and it's, it exports all that code. And you can recycle that block, that mix-in, 
all throughout your site as many times as you want. If you were to hand code that, that's gonna take you way, way longer. So don't be fooled by the fact that right here, we have 25 lines of CSS or SAS, and here we have five lines of CSS. That's only because we're setting up these global variables and everything that we're gonna start using and it's gonna save us time. Anyway, back on track here. We're done with the body. Let's add a couple spaces here and let's style our article. We're gonna say background is white and uh, the width, let's give it a fixed width of 760 pixels and let's say margin zero auto, padding and 40 pixels. So now if I were to save this, you're gonna see here in the preview, we've got our little container that's white and padded, but it's not actually 760 pixels wide. It's what another additional 80 pixels because our padding is adding some width there because that's how padding works within the box model. So what we're gonna do is adjust that using box sizing and then border box. What that's going to do, it's shrunk it right back to 760. So it's not adding, the padding isn't adding extra width. I want it to actually be 760 wide with 40 pixels of padding within it rather than the padding pushing it out. So just a little CSS tip there. Okay, so that is our article. Let's jump into our header. We're gonna style the header. And what I wanna do with this header is I wanna create a blue circle centered with the container kind of overlapping, oh, spit on my screen, handy little cloth here. I want that blue circle and I want it to appear in the center of the top of the screen and I want it to be tucked behind the uh, container here, article. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna really use some SAS here. Uh, let's start off by creating a mix-in because what I wanna do is I wanna reuse this mix-in for other sections of this web page. So let's go back up to our mix-in and we're gonna create a mix-in here. So if you're using SCSS for Sassy CSS, you can create mix-ins by saying, I believe it's mix-in, you know, the mix-in name, like this, and I would call it circle thing, and then you can have your parameters in there. So that's how you'd write it in sassy CSS. But what is awesome about sass is that this is all you have to write. Equals the name, no curly braces. So this is you starting out your mix-in, pretty cool. So it's gonna be called circle thing. I'm gonna add five uh, parameters that you can pass into this mix-in. Mix-in is kind of like a function. So I'm gonna say rad for radius. I'm gonna say height for the height. We're gonna throw in a width. We're gonna throw in a BG for background and a color using the proper Canadian spelling. Uh, and that's not gonna affect the code or anything. When you're writing code, you actually have to write it in the American spelling. Uh, but whenever I write variables and such, wherever I can, I exercise my Canadian right to spell it properly. So uh, I have a lot of Canadian, sorry, American students out there. So I know you're probably cringing a little bit, eh? Anyway, let's, uh, let's write this mix-in. So we're gonna say WebKit. This is what's great about mix-ins is I can write a bunch of CSS in here and then just write one line of code later. So we'll get to that. WebKit, border, radius, and then the variable we would pass in is rad. And then moz, border, radius. Again, we're gonna pass rad in there. MS, Microsoft, I believe, border, radius, rad. And finally, just the, the actual CSS rule here, border, radius, and then rad. So. That's the border radius. That's what's gonna get passed in. So when you pass in that value into there, it's gonna throw it into all these here. You'll see how that works a little bit later. We're gonna also add a height, and that's gonna be the height variable. We're gonna add a width. That's gonna be the width variable. We're gonna add line height, and we're gonna use that as the same, the height variable. We're gonna add text align, it's gonna be centered, and background is going to be BG, that variable that we passed in, and color is going to be, that autocomplete really messes with me sometimes. It's gonna be color that we pass in. And finally, margin zero auto. Now I'm gonna save, give some space there, save that mix in, there's my mix in. Look at all that code I had to write. Now watch this. Uh, when I go down to, I wanna show you here in the CSS, you're not gonna see that mix in. It's not visible on CSS, it's only visible uh, in SAS, but when I go to my header down here, I'm gonna call that mix in by saying plus circle thing. And then I have to pass in those parameters, those arguments into this mix in. So I'm gonna say 100% for the radius, because remember it was rad. Then it was the height and width. I'm gonna say 200 pixels height, 200 pixels width. The background color, BG variable is gonna be blue. Notice how I'm using a variable here. And I'm gonna also pass in white as the text color. Now when I save this, check this out. Look at the 
circle here. That's just by this one single line here. What's cool is that I can use this circle thing mixin across my site now. I've written it once and now I can just continually use the circle thing and I can customize it with my the arguments that I pass in. And then here it is in the CSS, just like that. So now there's a few things that I want to do. I want to tuck the article up and above it. But first, it looks like I might need to change the H1's font size. So I'm gonna nest the H1 here and I'm gonna say font size. We're gonna call the font size variable and plus two. So it's gonna be with 16 pixels, I believe. There we go, perfect. And now let's go back up to our article and there's just a couple quick things that I want to do to modify that. We're gonna say position relative and Z index negative two because I want it to be behind the circle. That's what I want. And then I'm gonna say margin, uh, we already have a margin up here. So I'm gonna say margin negative 60 pixels auto zero, save it. And now here in our browser, you can see that article is tucked up behind our uh, little circle logo. And now it's a last little bit of style here. We're gonna style the footer and we're gonna call that circle thing again. And I'm gonna say 100%. I'm gonna say 150 pixels high, 150 pixels wide. Uh, we're gonna have a black background and a pale color. Then font size, I'm gonna say the font size variable, variable minus three, I want it to be small, smaller than that. Position, we're gonna position relative and we're going to Z index that negative four because what I wanna do here, let's show you here in the browser, I wanna take this circle and tuck it up behind the article. So now using because I said position relative, I'm gonna say go margin top negative 60 pixels, and that is gonna tuck it up behind the container. So there it is. There is our first SaaS website. We just took some basic HTML, some really nice semantic HTML, styled it up in SaaS using the variables and the mix-ins across the site. It ex uh, compiled some really beautiful, nice CSS, uh, and we created a really simple, straightforward CSS3 style web page using SAS. I hope you enjoyed that. We're gonna go way deeper into SAS as we go throughout this course, so hang tight and I'll see you in the next video.